you go. Isn't she here yet? Probably running a bit late. Bye, Sophie. See you next week. Give poor old Mozart time to recover. That's the lot, Simon. I'll see you later, Mum. Are you sure we've time, Mum? Of course we have. In you get. The Prime Minister couldn't avoid questions about his growing war of words with Neil Kinnock. I don't know what Mr Kinnock has said today. And if I spent all my time, I almost said wasted all my time commenting on everything. Boring this. When's the snooker on? She's producing the policies for the next few years that will make this country more prosperous. That's what I'm going to concentrate on. After unveiling a plaque, the Prime Minister toured the college and spoke to some of the 300 pupils. It will eventually take... the whole store. At best, drop it off now. I won't have much chance with Flo staying. Ah, oh, of course. How's college, Jane? It's getting a bit serious. Finals, public concerts being judged. Scary. There's no time for chatter. Come on, Jane. For us to find out what the and under the Flo? And for them to find out what the cultural side of the Asians are. There is a problem I don't know what's happened to excuse me these days. See you Friday, then. Remember, relax, Jane. Trust the music. It's all there. Sure. Must go. Give my love to Aunt Flo. had to drop my daughter off. Could you sign in, please? You should know who I am by now. Lift your feet up, Flo. Have a nice time, Flo. See you Friday. Bye, Dory. Her medication. I like having to mention this, Mrs. Bowler, but the fees are in arrears by three months, I know. The solicitors are waiting for probate on my husband's estate, then I'll settle it. Uh, you better take this. No need. A Bob's old walking stick somewhere. She needs more than a walking stick. Oh, do stop fussing. My son's at home. Big, strong chap. We'll manage. Fancy a detour? Run out down the coast? Oh, yes, please. Nice not to be cooped up. I promised Mrs. Goodwin I'd pick up her protein tablets in Bexhill. I'd think the woman could at least collect her at a reasonable time. Can we watch the snooker with our cocoa? Of course we can. Good. I like Hurricane Higgins. Got a nice bum. Will Jane be there? I told you, she's in London. Something's wrong. The steering's gone funny. Are you all right, Flo? I think so. <laughs> Don't like the look of that lot. Oh, sugar. Puncture, no spare. I took it out to make room for the jumble. I'll get help. Do you want some music? Oh, oh no, I like this. Really? <laughs> Won't be long.
Sorry to disturb you. It's my car. I've a bit Mrs. of a... Mrs. Bowler? John Soane. I used to cut your husband's hair. Oh, yes, I've got yes, a... Yes, was a regular in my chair. Sorry he, uh... Come in. Come in. Yes, poor old Bob. So sudden. A real shock. Cancer, wasn't it? Not exactly. Mr. Soane... Never I... had much faith in hospitals. Look at my diabetes. They got the tests all wrong. No one bothers nowadays. I've had a puncture. Bob's aunt's in the car. May I use the phone? Oh, you should have said. Come on, I'll put the spare on for you. I haven't got one. I need to phone. Take ages, these breakdown people. I was once stuck on the hard shoulder near Basingstoke for three hours. Really? And tell a lie, he was near a four. I called them just after two, and it was ten to six before the chap showed up. Would you believe that? I'm only glad I wasn't with you. The door's open. She's not there. Must have wandered off somewhere. She can barely move without help. Flo! No need to panic. Can't have got this far. She can't. She might have tried to follow you. Got lost. Where can she be? Perhaps I better phone the police. <gasps> See you to now. Is there any reason you can think of which would make your aunt want to get out? We'd been in the car for a bit. Maybe she needed to spend a penny. Uh, your son's home. Not found our way there. Would you open the boot, please? In case I'm hiding something, you mean? You'd better go with your vehicle. We'll ring you as soon as we've any news. Mm -hmm. Let's hope it's not in the middle of the night. I called a little while ago about Florence Jackson being missing. Come in. Sorry to wake you. We thought a motorist might have spotted her walking on the road, brought her back. Afraid not. She can't walk anyway. Oh? Not without help, she can't. Bit puzzling then. Doubt if she could even have got out of the car on her own. You sure about that? She wouldn't have found it easy. You left the spare in the garage, Mum. I know, I know. Probably Jane. I called her earlier. Of course I'm worried. It's been four hours. What's that noise? Helicopter? My God, what's happening? Now, keep calm, darling. She'll turn up. Best thing you can do is get some sleep. Don't talk to me like I'm a child. I'm coming home. Don't be absurd, Jane. The police are doing everything that can be done. I'll call as soon as there's news. You should be in bed, too. You've work to go to. Some sleep. Not a wink. You? Gracious, you should be going. Sure. Ring me, yeah?
Mrs. Bowles? Bowler, yes. D.S. Booth. Still no news, I'm afraid. Oh. Mr. Day in Bex Hill confirms you went there for tablets. Confirms? Didn't you believe me? Just doing our job, Mrs. Bowler. Doesn't look very flat. I've been pumping it up. The garage is coming to collect it. Uh, no, we'll take it if we may. Just routine. Key's in there. You'll be in touch. She's dead. Well, we found a body. Excuse me, my biscuits. You'd taken the spare tire out to make room for your daughter's violin. Not a violin. Jane's a cellist. And that was another time. This was for Jumble, the church bazaar. Where did you actually find her? By the pumping station, half a mile across a muddy field. Really? I'm very surprised. You did say she might have got out to spend a penny, Shirley. Sheila. Yes, but I doubt she could have walked that far on her own. We'll need you to identify the body. Couldn't one of the staff from the home do that? As a relative, we'd prefer it was you. Did I see the shoes you were wearing last night? They've been cleaned. Of course. Don't you clean your shoes? Mrs. Bowler, I'm very sorry. Dr. Jelani, they said it to be the police surgeon. I handle things for them as well. I'm sorry you have to go through this. I've never seen a dead body before. I didn't want to see Bob like that. I understand. So soon after your husband. I'm truly sorry. I should never have left her alone. Oh, poor Aunt Flo. No taxis here, Jane. Change my mind. I'm going to stay. I want to be with you two. Be ridiculous. I'm staying. You have a concert tomorrow night. Sweet of you to come, but you must go back now. Aunt Flo would want that. She was so proud of you. Your music. Early subs, hot water bottle and bed. For goodness sake. Sorry to interrupt. We need to take statements from you and your son. Now? My daughter has a train to catch. All right, if we go through, this time of night. Your taxi, off you go. This is very inconvenient. I've no food in the house. It's late. We've got to go out to eat. Aren't you interested in what happened to your aunt, Mrs. Bowyer? Bowler. My name is Bowler. I barely slept last night. Can't this wait? Won't take long. Perhaps if you go with DS Renault into the kitchen, sir. You say you've no food in the house. That's right. Surprising. An old lady coming to stay and you've no food. She ate at the nursing home before she left. I do know how to look after my own aunt. I'd have shopped today. Mrs. Jackson wasn't actually your own aunt, was she? Well, no, she was Bob's. My late husband's. She couldn't have managed your stairs. Where was she to sleep? In here. Anna put you up bed. 
No point in getting it out until she arrived. Where was Aunt Flo going to sleep? Not sure. Jane's old room, I suppose. Anyone actually witnessed this puncture? Oh, some scruffy types on motorbikes went past. They might have seen it. Did you recognise any of them? Of course I didn't. You say you found your son earlier in the evening. What time was that? Just after eight on my way to Bex Hill. What time did she phone? Um, no idea. Nine, 9.15? Is this really necessary? For elimination purposes. I'll also need the clothes you're wearing. Honestly, what I've written around. It may seem a bit of a rigmarole to you, but to do our job properly, we need to clarify a few points. It took you over an hour to get back from Bex Hill. You must have driven quite slowly. Aunt Flo was nervous of fast driving. Which ensured it was dark when you finally got back and reached the hill. And it would, of course, been dark down this road, too. That's where they found her. A good 500-yard hike from where you broke down. Or a short drive down here in the dark. We didn't drive down here. I had a puncture back there. Do you have a copy of Florence Jackson's will? What? No. I imagine her solicitors have that. I must get back now. I have a train to catch. Train? Planning to go away, are we? I have my daughter's concert to go to in London. We'd prefer you to stay. She's expecting me to be there. She's upset enough as it is. made me so proud tonight. It's down to you. Best teacher I ever had. Simon phoned to wish me luck. Should have come. He's looking at a flat for sale. Ridiculous. He just wants his own space, Mum. Two of us in a three-bedroom house. He's got all the space in the world. Mum, last night, the police... Oh, I know. Barging in like that, didn't even wipe their feet. What did they say? What happened? How Aunt Flo came to be? She must have walked somehow. I don't know. Maybe one of those long-haired bikers took her. Who knows? Seriously, Mum, the way they turned up worries me. They do think it was just an accident. The police have a difficult enough job these days. It's nice to see them doing it thoroughly for once. What have they said to you? Not much. Are they being heavy? <laughs> Young people in language, heavy, I don't know. Why won't you ever share? If there's a problem, I want to know. There is no problem.
I phoned earlier Florence Jackson's will. The police have asked for it. Mrs. Bowler? Russell Parks. Are the police interviewing you about your aunt? They're coming again this afternoon. Will you have anyone with you? A solicitor present? No. Why should I? I picked up a whisper at court. Oh? The police don't think your aunt's death was accidental. What do they think, then? Missed you at the parish committee meeting, Sheila. Afraid I've been a bit caught up. Of course, of course. Actually, I was rather angry. I heard the most ridiculous tittle-tattle there. Preposterous. About you and your Aunt Flo's death. I certainly put them right. No mistake. Well, I was going out, but never mind. Oh, the police. Letting me know smarmy faces on her way. Sergeant Booth, she's going to drop my clothes back. Good. Well, let's hope that's an end to it. Coffee? I need to be going. Oh, I've found another flat. I like the look of one. Terrible area. Returning your property. Thank you. I've just made some coffee if you... Sheila Bowler, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. But what you do say may be given in evidence. How long will I be? Shall I bring my shopping list? Who will feed the cat? They're saying, under cover of darkness, you drove your aunt to the river, threw her in, then staged the puncture as an alibi. It's absurd. Utterly absurd. Just refuse to answer questions. Reply no comment each time. Why? You didn't do it, so they can't possibly have evidence you did. But they could tie you in knots if you say anything. It's your right. We broke down. I went for help. How mobile was Aunt Flo? Hadn't seen her much lately. Getting out of her chair was becoming a bit of a performance. Seems she had stomach cancer. Cancer? Really? Early stages. Mum only said recently. She wouldn't have had long to live anyway, then. You were close to your aunt. Was your mother jealous of that relationship? Don't be ridiculous. You're twisting everything to make Mum sound like some sort of criminal. Well, she is now in police custody. You knew you were the sole beneficiary of Mrs. Jackson's will. I had no... <clears throat> no comment. You have power of attorney and you're behind with payments to her retirement home, is that correct? No comment. Are you refusing to answer the questions because you're guilty? It's my client's legal right not to answer. We've heard you're short of money. Your expected inheritance from Aunt Flo was dwindling paying the home fees, wasn't it? No comment. Aunt Flo wasn't rich. No money worries. Bob left us well provided for. I've no mortgage and £17,000 a year to live on. At least let me put them right on that. You're innocent. You're not obliged to say anything. The whole thing's madness. It's the right tactic. I promise. Need some lunch. Could be a long session. Maybe it was an accident she drowned. If you don't answer, we won't know. Am I boring you? 
There's a lot more of this to come. For the benefit of the tape, DS Renault has entered the room. So, Aunt Flo had cancer. She was gonna die anyway. Maybe you helped her on her way. How dare! No comment. Or did you just feel bitter that she'd outlived your husband? No comment. I expect you're dying to get out of here and go home, aren't you? No comment. No? All right, then you can stay. Have a night in the cells on us. You just happen not to be carrying a spare when you just happen to get a puncher. No comment. You went to get help. When you came back, hey presto, the old lady was gone. Vanished into thin air. No comment. She couldn't walk, so she was somehow spirited away to end up face down in a river. That it? That your story? No comment. Look. We agreed she couldn't walk, so someone must have taken her to the river. What well, they must have, yeah? If you really want to help find that person, presumably you'll answer. No comment. Which tends to suggest we're not looking for anyone else. Are we? No comment. Interview terminated at 12.30 p.m. You're free to go. Is that it, then? It's all speculation. They've absolutely no evidence. You're clear. Thank God. Just turn it like that, thank you, everyone. Yes, and... Simon, this is Peter. Hi. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Bowler. We're going to crack open some champagne, Peter. Care to join us? Great. What did you do that for? This is a family celebration. <sighs> Peter's a close friend of Jane's. It's her big day. She'd have done better than a 2 2 without all this police nonsense. Mrs. Bowler, sorry to arrive on you like this. I thought you should know as soon as possible. Know what? I'm afraid they're going ahead. They're charging you with murder. This was a crime driven by an age-old motive. Greed. The Florence Jackson was not a wealthy woman. But remember, people have been murdered for less than half a crown. Testimony will show how Sheila Bowler coldly pushed the old lady into the river. Mrs. Dobson, could she, in your view, have walked 800 yards in the dark, unaided? She couldn't walk unaided at all. Would you describe Mrs. Bowler as a caring relative? Hardly. She didn't even bother to take the Zimmer frame that night. How often, in fact, did Mrs. Bowler visit her aunt? In the five months Mrs. Jackson was with us, the book records six visits. She went there all the time. Thank you, Mrs. Dobson. Just never signed the silly book. Did she immediately mention that she had an emergency? No. Not really. We had quite a chat before she mentioned the flat tire. Returning to the car, when did Mrs. Bowler notice her aunt wasn't there? I suppose we were about 30 yards away when she said, look, she's not there. Did you look? Were you able to see in the car yourself at that point? No. It was pitch dark. Couldn't see a thing. And this is our Austrian holiday. 
Austrian, not Australian, Simon. <laughs> Get it the right way up. <laughs> oh, she was an intrepid traveller, Flo. Hiked for miles. We gave those woolly hats to the church jumble. The vicar's wife bought one, wore it to church. Aunt Flo giggled through the whole service. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly had us thrown out. <laughs> she was a card, wasn't she? She was a dear soul. I'll get the tea. Looks tired. Must be an awful strain. It'll be OK. People aren't that stupid. So there was no food in the house? No bed prepared? There was absolutely nothing to indicate she was expecting her aunt to stay. As well as being police surgeon, you were Florence Jackson's GP? Correct. Dr. Jelani, you wrote the report recommending Mrs. Jackson be admitted to the residential home? Yes. Can you tell the court on what grounds was that admission granted? On her restricted mobility, so as to get her an allowance to help pay the home's fees. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, your witness, Mr. Pennell. How long had you known Florence Jackson, Dr. Jelani? Oh, let me see. At least ten years. To sum up, would you say that the defendant was active and caring to Mrs. Jackson over the years? Very caring. Devoted. But for Mrs. Bowler, she would have had to go into a nursing home much earlier. Thank you, Dr. Jelani. You may step down, Doctor. The bruising above the eye and on her upper arms could be consistent with force being used. Force such as would have been needed to lead her down against her will into the river. That is possible. Thank you, Dr. Eden. I'd like to reserve cross-examination until your lordship and the jury have visited this evening. As you wish, Mr. Pennell. <laughs> Those two look as though they've had a good lunch. You'd think they were at a cricket match. Aunt Flo died here. Pennell's taking it very seriously. He's playing a shrewd hand. In what way? That bank looks precarious at the best of times. See what I mean? The prosecution are saying Aunt Flo was immobile, yes? She could walk a bit. But she was basically immobile, which will work in our favor. Pennell will show your mother couldn't possibly have got a wheelchair-bound old lady into that river. You think that'll do the trick? <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Pennell knows his business, Jane. I'm interested, Doctor, in how Florence Jackson, who by all accounts was unable to walk, got into the water. Uh, we've agreed uh, there were no bruises on her body consistent with her being dragged or rolled down the bank. That is correct. So what is the explanation? That Mrs. Bowler stood on the top of the bank and hurled her aunt clean into the water? <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying it would be easy but she could have been assisted down. Assisted? An immobile old lady. You saw for yourself how difficult it was for a fit young man to get down on his own. It could be possible. A 62-year-old woman carrying a, an immobile 89-year-old. This is in the realms of fantasy. My mother is 80. She could run up a slope as steep as that. <laughs> you have left out that this was, I take it, in the dark. Indeed. Pitch black, your lordship. Dr. Heath, this is a murder trial. You are an expert witness. Seriously, could anyone run up or down that bank? Could you? Could your 80-year-old mother? I put to you it would have been impossible for Mrs. Bowler to have led her immobile aunt down that bank. Goodness. 
That should be an A-flat. I'm having real trouble with the string crossing. <laughs> such a racket. Can't you do it elsewhere? Mum? You don't have to be here just for me, you know. I expect you'd rather be with your boyfriend anyway. How can you? That is so unfair. Jane. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry, Jane. It's OK. I had no right to say that. I guess we're all a bit strung out, eh? Hey? We know you're nervous about tomorrow. Just go in the stand and tell them. It'll be fine. Of course it will. Your grandfather always said, the great thing about British justice is that the truth will out. When you got to Mr. Soane's to call the breakdown service, you must have been in quite a hurry. Yes, of course I was. You had an emergency. Did you say straight away, I've got an old lady in the car, can I use your phone? Yes, I did. Not according to Mr. Soane. He said you didn't seem unduly worried, and that you had quite a long chat. Well, he happened to know my husband. So you didn't ask the phone straight away? Well, no, not exactly. The shoes you wore that night were cleaned promptly the next morning? Yes. Why? Why do you usually clean shoes, for goodness sake? Because they're muddy. Yes, I'd walk to get help. By cleaning them, it meant, of course, the police were unable to trace where, in fact, the mud came from. That wasn't why I cleaned them. 89 years of age, unable to move, unaided. So we can rule out the possibility that she walked to the river and fell to her death. I don't know, I suppose so. So in your mind, you must have known she'd been abducted, didn't you? It seemed an explanation, yes. It seemed the only explanation, didn't it? I suppose so. So why didn't you say that to the police at the time? I don't know. Why didn't you tell the police that it was impossible for your aunt to walk from the car? I did say it was unlikely. Why didn't you tell them that this was an abduction, not a missing person? I didn't think of it. Why did you go home to bed, leaving everyone to spend a fruitless night searching the immediate vicinity? Because you knew that she was already dead. You had driven her to the river and coldly pushed her to her death. Hadn't you? Worst testimony I've ever heard. Crucified herself. Never needed you as much as I need you now, Bob. The three pillars of the prosecution scenario have imploded. The Crown produced no witness nor forensic evidence linking the accused to the crime. Secondly, the allegation that Mrs. Bowler was callous to the old lady has been disproved by Dr. Jelani, Mrs. Jackson's own doctor. Thirdly, Dr. Heath's attempts to show how Mrs. Bowler could have put her immobile aunt into the river have been literally laughed out of court. The defense is correct in saying there are no witnesses to the event and no forensic evidence. But then you must consider the only apparent alternative. Is it credible that someone else acting purely by chance abducted the old lady that night and killed her? Jane, darling, don't let that lot see you're upset. How long has it been? Five hours. Stop fussing. Now, come on. A 19th century composer beginning with B, but not German or Austrian. Borodin? Berlioz? Five letters.
Have you reached a verdict on which you are all agreed? No. Have at least ten of you agreed a verdict? Yes. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. The only sentence the law permits me to pass is that of life imprisonment. I make no comment on the circumstances of the case. Take her down. this outfit here. Let's have a look at you, see if you're carrying. You are now prisoner TV3389, and that is what you answer to at all times. That understood, TV3389? Yes. Word of advice. First time in it, watch back. Trust nobody. Come on. I think this is right. No, it's not. We've been down this street already. Traffic wasn't bad. Simon's a great navigator. We were doing fine until we went over Tower Bridge instead of Blackfriars. Never mind, we're here now. The guards seem quite nice. What's the food like? Expect it's not as bad as... Jane, darling. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Jane, try to control yourself. <laughs> what? <laughs> to pretend this nightmare's not happening. This is all wrong. Totally wrong. <laughs> I 
can they print such garbage? Can't believe what scum these journalists are. Telephone bill. Water, gas to pay. Bloody reporter, ignore her. But how are we going to handle this? These bills, the house. It's all right. I'll give up my flat and move back in. I'm sorry, Si, but it's the only way we can manage this. Hello? Hello? God almighty. Hi. Can I have a word? Jane, isn't it? Angela Devlin. Claire, my daughter was at primary school with you centuries ago. All oh, right. Of course, yes. Come in. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother. Aren't you and your husband journalists? Oh, no. No, not as such, not really. We're absolutely appalled at this. We want to help. We've been abroad, we got back, and we heard about the case. I know your mother. She's an intelligent, caring woman. This verdict beggars belief. You want to help? How? Tim and I write about and campaign on behalf of people who've been wrongly treated by the law. I also visit women in prison regularly. Look, I really would like to help. That in the process, sell Mum's story to one of these rags. I'm not selling anything to anybody. I don't understand what you can do. Have you lodged an appeal yet? Well, don't we need special grounds? No, an appeal is her right. Don't just leave everything to the lawyers. Do your own homework. Question everything. Our revered judiciary hate admitting they've screwed up. How is your mum? Prison's tough, even for young women. How do you think she is? Her age, a life sentence means she may never come out. They'll set a tariff. There's flexibility as to what life means. She'll be given a minimum number of years. So how long will she serve? Previous good character. Could be lucky. Six. Eight years? You may want to think about it, but I do know how to stick bullets up well-placed backsides. I can make things happen. Right, TV 3389, let's have you. Sorry. You're being transferred to Bubbletor Prison, Essex. I need to phone my children. Move it. Good riddance, bossy cow. And you're going with a big mouth. If it's any consolation, I know how you feel. Get lost. You ain't got no mates. I had some back there. Every lousy thing I've ever had has been taken away from me. They even took my baby. My Rachel. Do you mind? I was doing the crossword. Surprised you haven't got nine across. 
They won't stand for their instruments being played. Eight letters. Cellist. Didn't I read your daughter plays a cello? How long had Flo been unable to walk? And before she went into the home, she managed okay on her own. When was that? Um, about five months earlier. What? Why didn't that come up in court? Did your lawyers know? They were told, yes. Why? It's an absolutely key question. Five months isn't very long. If Flo was still mobile, it would open up all sorts of possibilities. Her death may have been a tragic accident. Can't use it like this. Mr. Rand, did you become a hygiene expert? Move it. Go on, move it. The doctor offered me Panadol. Your age shouldn't have to work like that. Keep a diary, a record of things. Might be useful for your appeal. It really is very good of you, Angela, all this. Don't be silly. Do you think I'll get the appeal? We're meeting the lawyers next week. Store up phone cards. We'll need to talk. Build a case. I hope we can. I don't fancy spending the rest of my life in this place. It won't be for life, Mum. Angela reckons you'll get a low tariff. It may only be for six years. Bob's birthday. I didn't mention it on the phone to Jane, in case it upset her. She didn't mention it, in case it upset me. Silly. Sad. This will be a nice break from kitchen work for you. You can cut this rose bush back. It's not a rose bush, it's a hydrangea, and it shouldn't be pruned now. My mood swings are most unlike me. Feeling of depression almost unbearable. Something's puzzling us. You all seem to accept Aunt Flo must have been murdered. Your mother was charged with murder. We have to respond to that charge. Aunt Flo lived on her own until five months before she died. She was quite able to get around there. Since then, she may have lost her confidence, but she hadn't developed any condition to prevent her walking. We're not claiming she was an Olympic athlete. But how come nobody looked into whether she was still able to walk only five months later? Of course we considered it. But all the evidence indicated that she couldn't. Besides, open up that possibility, the main plank of our defence crumbled. Why? Or am I being thick? We're claiming it was impossible to lead an immobile old lady down that bank into the river. If Aunt Flo could walk, that becomes invalid. But at the same time, it opens up a more credible possibility. She may not have been murdered by anyone. Just wandered off into the night, making the whole thing a terrible accident. Yes, I understand. However, it is not my job at appeal to say how Mrs Jackson died. It is to overturn the trial verdict and prove that Sheila Bowler was not, beyond reasonable doubt, guilty of her murder. Mind if I join you? <clears throat> Super grand. <laughs> Please do. If someone had told me a year ago I'd be in prison. Exercising with a black woman? I didn't mean that, sorry. TV3389, see your personal officer. Your appeal. Oh, Sheila. Has it come through? A 
I'm afraid I've bad news. The Home Secretary's fixed your tariff. You've got 12 years. Three hundred people signed the latest petition. Angela's on some TV program about a documentary. Why well, are you gawping out four eyes? Someone gave a verbal. They had a right punch up. Both got a room spin banged up for a week. You've got a native, Mum. So Jane's seeing her chap today. He's got a name, Mum. He's called Peter. I told her to bring him on a visit. Never does. Maybe she finds it an embarrassment, her mother in prison. How can you say that? She's out there working her guts out for you. I know. I'm sorry, Simon. I've never spent Christmas away from home before. The most likely thing is that Aunt Flo wanted to go to the loo, walked off in the dark across the field and fell in. In that case, the trial and error programme will need an expert to say that she was capable of walking. Penal's really not keen about this. Well, if it's what happened, she wasn't pushed. She fell in the river. Jane, there is no point in messing about. We have to change the defence team. Pennell's right. The prosecution would have a field day if the original defence now claimed Flo could walk, but not if a new QC did. It must be for Mum to decide. No! It's for you to persuade her. It'd be like blaming them. We need a new approach, a new team. I don't want to offend anyone. I was lucky to get good lawyers in the first place. The grounds for the appeal will be that Aunt Flo walked to her death. I've said no, that's that. How are the auditions going? Mum, till you've won your appeal, I'm not joining an orchestra. So please... Have you chosen a new piece yet? I think the Volshak's a good idea. Will you listen to me for once in your life? We've been working day and night on this. We found a top specialist who thinks Flo could walk. You have to trust our judgment. Angela's suggesting a new solicitor. Do you agree to us taking him on? I don't know. It's a big step. To get you out, we need big steps. So Aunt Flo could, in fact, have walked to her death. Uh, from the autopsy x-rays, there's absolutely nothing to suggest Mrs. Jackson wasn't physically capable of walking some distance. This is brilliant. Professor Young's a big hitter. Oh, they fixed a transmission date, September the 20th. They want to film a piece with you as well. Me? I'd be hopeless. Rubbish. Seize the opportunity. Tell the truth. Tell them about your mum. Watching this. It's a part of the world almost designed for a classic murder mystery. But the riddle of the missing aunt is, we believe, neither a mystery nor a murder. It's completely against the character. It's absolutely unthinkable that she could have done it. Unthinkable. Have you ever wondered if your mother might have done this awful thing? Never once. Not for a second. Not even in my darkest moments, no way. It's utterly ludicrous. There are numerous cases of old, seemingly immobile people who have walked much longer distances. It's an entirely plausible scenario. Indeed, it seems the most likely explanation of events that night. 
Aunt Flo seemed there some years before her death. I've got to give you an appeal. You'll be out of here by Christmas. Still no news. Bloody home office, eh? Are you all right, Gail? They won't let me see my baby. Your appeal date has been confirmed, April 10th in London. Thank goodness for that. I'm concerned the TV program may have raised your hopes too much. How will you feel if this appeal fails? Ten more years in here. I'm 65 now. I don't think I could get through it. Well, it needn't be 10. As a model prisoner, you'd be in line for early parole. But only if you admit guilt. I'm not in the habit of telling lies. I don't intend to start now. If you hold your hands up to a lesser charge, manslaughter, with what you've done already, you'll be out in a couple of years. Don't any of you listen. I'm innocent. Completely innocent. It's up to you, love. We're only trying to help. Previous defence made no attempt to pursue the possibility that Florence Jackson could, in fact, walk. An eminent geriatrician has since been consulted and asked whether her death could have been accidental. I therefore call Professor Young. His evidence will prove that this was, in fact, the most likely cause of death. Your Lordships, the Crown submits that Professor Young's evidence would be purely theoretical and extremely speculative. He never examined Mrs Jackson when she was alive. His opinion has no relevance to this case. The professor is no doubt a distinguished authority in his field, but any evidence he may give would indeed be entirely theoretical. Professor Young may not be called. Darling Cyan Jane, I can't think how you are feeling tonight, apart from sheer desolation. There's still hope. At least we've got a glimmer. I cannot think why God is putting us through this dreadful trauma. But please, please, both of you, the best thing you can do for me is to now get on with your own lives. I'm not pretending it will be easy. But I know you have the strength. I am exceedingly proud of both of you. Conduct of the previous defense is not strictly relevant to this appeal. We consider that no criticism should be made of the decision made by Mr. Purnell, and we totally reject any criticism made of him and of the appellant's previous solicitors. It is our view that if such a theory were placed before a jury, it would have been positively damaging to the appellant's case as being manifestly incredible. Against Professor Young's speculative claims 
is the view of the Greyfriars staff that Mrs. Jackson could not walk. In the light of the way the appeal has been put... P.S. We should say we have viewed the totality of the Perhaps a miracle will yet happen. Always remember that I love you both very much. So, we ask ourselves, are we satisfied that this conviction on the evidence is safe and satisfactory? We answer that question in the affirmative. Accordingly, the appeal is dismissed. British justice, a farce. An old boys club sticking together. I want one person to serve this sentence now, not three. But, Mum, listen. Mum. I want you to sell my house, Simon. Get a place of your own again. It's not over, Mum. We'll appeal again. You persuaded me to change the defence. It didn't work. Forget it now. You've a career, Jane. If Scottish Opera accepts you, go. We're not giving up. Please, get on with your lives. Don't go in on yourself. Don't. Let me show you something. Given to me by a good friend. It helped me just to hold it. Helped me fight my nightmare. I can't tell by just looking. I've been accepted. Brilliant. Well, Scotland's not that far. I'm not going. Angela said she's going to help me campaign for another appeal. Oh, yeah? I expect she'll want to change the defence team again. We had to do that, Simon. We got the wrong result, but it was still the right thing to do. You're too influenced by Angela. We were nowhere till she came along. And where are we now? We owe that woman. I've learned masses from Angela. I've learned not to take no for an answer. I'm going to fight on whatever it takes for as long as it takes. Do what you like. I'll never give up, never. Jane. I'm sorry. I'm just wound up. Come here, you big oaf. If Aunt Flo could still walk whilst she was in the home, the chances are someone must have seen her. You heard the evidence from the matron. She says not. One of the other nurses was in the public gallery at the appeal. Valerie someone? I remember Flo liked her. I was always very fond of Flo. 
real character. Did you ever see her walk unaided? It's very important. She was incontinent. She tried to get up in the night, lose her bearings. I found her in all sorts of places. Then she must have walked on her own. Not very far, but yes, she must have. Fantastic. One night she'd wandered away, got back in bed the wrong way round. But I doubt she could walk as far as you're saying. Would you make a written statement for our lawyers? I don't think I can. I'm a prosecution witness. Sorry. There has to be some way she can testify for us. Jane, you know what the solicitor says about this. Valerie Nye thinks she was capable of walking. Professor Young is convinced she could walk. We have hundreds of letters about other immobile old people walking. The letters are anecdotal. And this nurse is no use if she can't come forward. To persuade the Home Secretary to grant a new appeal, I need actual testimony Flo could walk. And from someone who knew her who can come forward. Nothing less will do. Then somehow we'll just have to get it. Won't we? Senior staff, Swan Wing, don't let their teas get cold. Ludicrous taking it up on small trays. Why no trolley? It's absurd. Tell him, girl. See, you find your tongue again, Mrs. Bossy Boots. Get on with it. Get on with it. Make sure it's not cold when they get it. Oh, nice work. Probably a minor embolism. A slight stroke. You need prolonged rest. I'd rather my family weren't informed. What the hell do they think they're doing? Prison? A woman of that age? Of course you can talk to the staff. There won't be much help. Most of them are new since your aunt's stay. It's Nurse Nye I'd like to speak to specifically. I'm afraid she's away on holiday at the moment. Excuse me. Dr. Jelani, nice to see you. It's Jane, isn't it? Actually, you may be able to help me. Can you remember which members of staff were here when my Aunt Flo was? Uh, that won't be easy. One of the nurses told me she was able to walk. I was hoping to persuade her to testify to that in court, but she's not here. Oh, well, I can help you there. Free sheet of power! Free sheet of power! Free sheet of power! Free sheet of power! It's still essential I get Free Professor Young on the stand. His opinion carries most authority. Well, they wouldn't hear him before. I've seen the transcripts. Different approach might do the trick. We are not here to make criticism of the previous defence. Had other evidence been available, they doubtless would have run it. I therefore ask your lordships, in light of the Home Secretary's decision to refer the case back to you, to hear Professor Young's testimony. The Crown objects to the Professor giving evidence. I refer your lordships back to the previous appeal. Thank you, Mr. Glass. Uh, one moment. We will hear his testimony. So, in your expert opinion, Professor, what could have been Mrs. Jackson's reaction to finding herself alone in the car that night? It's perfectly possible, uh, suffering from early Alzheimer's as she was, that she became confused, got out of the car, and walked to her death. You've read the many letters from the public where old people have done extraordinary things like this? Oh, indeed. They merely confirm what I know to happen regularly. So, if she did walk, it would be one of these extraordinary feats. One of these commonplace extraordinary feats, yes. I would like to call Dr. Gilani. You wrote the report recommending Mrs. Jackson be admitted to the home? Yes. 
But I exaggerated her problems when I wrote to the DHSS. Exaggerated? In what way, Doctor? Well, she, in fact, still had the structure for walking. Your report did say she was immobile. I only wrote that to get an old lady an allowance from a stingy government. <laughs> Let's get this clear. Despite your report and the staff at the home saying she was immobile, you were sure Mrs. Jackson could walk, Doctor? Indeed. The staff tended to keep her in a wheelchair for convenience. I saw her once get up from her chair and fetch a knife and fork, like this. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Well, you made a number of witness statements at the trial. Why didn't you mention this then? If you've seen her get out of her chair and walk, why did you not say so before? Because I wasn't asked the question. Until Jane Bowler approached me, nobody actually asked me whether Florence Jackson was able to walk. The defence now claim that no murder took place. Mrs. Jackson, contrary to evidence accepted at the trial, was able to walk on her own to her death. The prosecution maintains that the original verdict is safe. Their case remains that Mrs. Bowler had motive and opportunity to carry out the murder of her immobile aunt. The likelihood of this seems impossible to resolve. Experts on each side differ in their views. Therefore, we have decided, somewhat reluctantly, to quash this conviction. And, and, and to order that a retrial be held. Mrs. Bowler, you will be retried on the charge of murder promptly within the next four months. We will consider an application for bail. What we're saying is that Aunt Flo got out of the car in the dark, lost her bearings, and wandered off. Hell of a walk for an old lady. Uh, to my mind, it's perfectly feasible. I'm seeing it through the eyes of a jury. What happened here? Sorry, keep meaning to fix it. Well, we've done our best, and this guttering's loose. <sighs> Inside, I often dreamt I was home. Strange, I'm actually back. And nothing is quite as it should be. Well, we'll soon get it back as you want it. All that kept me going in there was the thought that one day I'd get out. Now I am. It all seems unreal. It's a reaction, Mum. Understandable. One thing I do know, I'll never go back. Whatever happens at the retrial, I won't be locked up again. You won't have to go back. We won't let that happen. I'll get a broom, and we can start getting that mess cleared up. Sheila Bowler, it is alleged that on the night of the 13th of May, 1992, you did willfully murder Florence Jackson. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Could Mrs. Jackson have walked that distance using a walking stick? Extremely doubtful. She didn't use a walking stick. She wasn't capable of walking unaided. Thank you, Mrs. Dobson. I'd like to call another member of the Greyfire staff, my lord. My lord, we've had five prosecution witnesses from the home already. They've all said substantially the same thing. Do we need to hear more? All of these people have first-hand knowledge of Mrs. Jackson's actual capabilities, my lord. 
Very well, Mr. Glass. I call Valerie Nye. Unbelievable. She appears for the prosecution and she knows the truth. You're no longer employed at the home, Mrs. Nye, but you did take care of the deceased at the time. Yes. In your view, was Mrs. Jackson able to walk unaided? You said she was in a wheelchair. Yes, but... She could walk with a stick. Mrs. Jackson had a walking stick? It was made for her by the physio. And she sometimes used it? She needed helpers, but she could walk with a stick. Talk about an own goal. With Dr. Jelani to come, we can really nail this walking business. I'm not calling Jelani. What? He swung the entire appeal. Please. Jelani was originally a prosecution witness. But we called him last time, Jeremy. This time would be too dangerous. In front of a jury, Glass would have a field day saying Jelani had changed his story from the first trial. The hardest decision is whether you take the stand, Sheila. Six years on, your recall of events is bound to be a bit hazy. Any slip-ups or hesitation will be pounced on by the prosecution. But if we don't call you, there may be consequences. What do you mean? Glass will say to the jury, if you were innocent, wouldn't you want to give evidence? Explain what happened? You have the weekend to think it over. I won't take the stand. I can't face that man again. As Jeremy keeps saying, juries are people. And people don't seem to take to me until they know me. Allow them to know you. Face them. Tell them what happened. Easier said than done. Glass made mincemeat out of me last time. Last time you weren't prepared. Think what you've learned since then. Let them see the real you. Trust yourself. It's a big risk. I'm terrified, Jane. Fine. It's your life. Hide away. Let them think she didn't bother to explain. She must have done it. Is that what you want? I call the defendant Sheila Bowler. In view of her age and the ordeal she's been through, I would ask your lordship if Mrs. Bowler could be seated and have the occasional break whilst she gives evidence. I don't see why not. Your daughter, Jane, was taking final music exams? Something you cared about very much? A love of music is something we share. I imagine this all caused her a lot of distress. Her father had died four months before. She was very fond of Aunt Flo. It was a dreadful time for her. So, her aunt's death was the very last thing you would have wished at such a time in her life? Of course. Absolutely. Thank you, Mrs. Bowler. When Glass is cross-examining, if you notice Sheila's looking tired, signal. I'll get Jeremy to ask for a break. Be discreet. Why did you leave your aunt alone in the car? I had a puncture. Well, you could have driven on a flat tire to the bridge end just a few hundred yards further on. Why abandon her? The car was slewing across the road. Aunt Flo was frightened. She was frightened in cars, was she? Yes, she was. Well, why hadn't you driven her straight home? Why take her on a very long detour to Bex Hill? I... Uh...
I think we're over the hour, my lord. Yes, indeed. We'll adjourn until tomorrow morning. All rise. He makes me feel so weak. Uncertain. I can't face it. I can't. Yes, you can. You're not in that box on your own. There are hundreds of us standing beside you. Take him on. Your aunt was to stay the weekend. And yet there was no food in the house. Why on earth not? She'd... She'd eaten at the home. I planned to shop in the morning. Oh, really? And why was there no bed prepared for her? I had to put you up upstairs. You intended your aged aunt to sleep on a put you up? I think I know more about my aunt's capabilities than someone who never met her, don't you? <laughs> Just answer rather than ask questions, please. You were the sole beneficiary of her will, weren't you? Yes, I didn't know that at the time. Her main asset being a flat then estimated at £30,000. It, in fact, went for much less. If she'd lived another two or three years, the nursing home fees would have eaten into that inheritance, wouldn't they? Yes, probably. Is that why you pushed her in the river? To protect your inheritance? I did not push her in the river. Well done, Sheila. Easily one on points on my card. Absolutely. The issue that still concerns me is will the jury buy the walking theory? If not, the only alternative is murder, and they may still convict. However, if we offer the jury a middle ground possibility, it would allow a way out. Middle ground? Say the jury don't believe you murdered Aunt Flo, but do believe you know more than you're letting on about how she really died. How might that have been? Aunt Flo wanted to spend a penny. You drove her to a quiet spot, turned the car around, found to your horror that she'd accidentally slipped in the river. Are you suggesting we claim that's what happened? No, not at all. It's simply put forward as an example of a plausible alternative the jury might be prepared to consider. She's told the truth for six years. You'd be saying she'd lied all along. It would be seen as a white lie, covering up an accident, not murder. Do that, it'll be a disaster. I've watched that jury. They believed every word Sheila said. Change the story, her credibility will be utterly destroyed. Let's assess how closing addresses go. Mr. Glass ended by saying Florence Jackson cannot speak for herself. I suggest if she could speak, her message would be please. Please. Don't make the same mistake again. I'm not sure they're with us. We will adjourn for lunch before I start my summing up. All rise. I'll put it privately to the judge, and he'll put the alternative explanation to the jury, called a Lucas ruling. If the jury feel a defendant told a white lie on one matter, it doesn't affect the truth of the rest of a testimony. Are all legal people brain dead? It'll just put doubts in their minds. Why mention lying at all? It's a technical legal device, hard for lay people to understand. Please don't patronize us. Explain, I need to understand. Should there be a guilty verdict, if we haven't put this forward, could jeopardize your mother's chances on any further appeal. Let's take that chance. My mother doesn't lie. I think this jury sends that. Whether it makes legal sense or not, let her case stand as it is. It's not your decision. It's hers. Yes, and I agree with Jane. 100%. If those are your instructions. You may feel for the deceased, you may feel for Mrs. Bowler having been through such an ordeal. 
put all such thoughts from your mind. They have no part in the important task you now face. Finally, as two of you are absent due to illness, any verdict must be unanimous. What happens if they can't all agree? No decision. He's adjourning. Dear Jane, should I not be coming home, you'll find the money for Tinker's cattery bill in my desk. Try to find a good home for him. Please answer the following question, yes or no. Have you reached a verdict on which you are all agreed? Yes. How do you find the defendant? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Mrs. Bowler, you're free to go. Stay tuned now on True Drama. Last chance. <laughs>